Welcome back. Uh, it's time for Entrepreneurship Tuesday. Our second segment happens right now. Thanks very much to Barry Moses for the first one. Well, it was really nice, you know, looking in for the, to the foods. But right now we get to mention something different. This morning I'm joined by Sebastian Gide. Yes. And it's, it's nice to have you. Thank you. Thank he you. is the founder of Kenya Entrepreneurs. Yeah, yeah. Karibu sana. Asante. I, have you ever been here before? Uh, sometimes back, yes. Sometimes back. Mm, yes, yes. All right, Karibu sana. It's, it's nice to have you and, to, of course, to get to talk about brand development and what you're doing currently. Okay. You've been doing so much about uh, corporates. Yes. Tell us more. Okay, so my name is Sebastian Davis Ngida. Mm -hmm. I'm the founder of uh, Kenktad, which is basically Kenyan Entrepreneurs Conference on Trade and Development. Mm -hmm. So under it, we do events, media and branding. So under events is what now you're referring to, uh, maybe corporate events, uh, social events, in terms of the technical aspect. So the right. production of it uh, from screen, sound, tent, and all that. Mm -hmm. From the media aspect, we specifically focus on uh, reliable corporate reporting. So we have a website, <coughs> Kenya Entrepreneur K, where we only publish content that has been sent to us by corporates, all the right. way they want it. So that, so for example, you want to invest in a company that we publish for, mm -hmm. you can easily follow through what they're doing, what the plan of the year is, what the financial report of the year is, mm -hmm. and so on. And then under branding, uh, number one, we do personal branding. So if right. you're looking to do, like have a presence on digital platforms, uh, like communications and media, mm -hmm. but we also do that for SMEs and startups. So right. ideally just helping them put their name out there. All right, Sebastian, before we get deeper you know, into the content of you know, the Kenyan entrepreneur, yes. let's talk about who is Sebastian, because most people would be like, we can't relate to the product, but we may not relate to the person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in, initially, it was intentional. Mm -hmm. What we wanted to do is to focus more, people to focus more on what we do, as opposed to the people behind mm -hmm. it. But my, I'm a last born in a family right. of 13. Mm -hmm. Uh, two moms, some, I come from a polygamous family. Uh, my background is electrical engineering, power option. Although I don't practice it, but that's what I went yes, to school for. Yes, and I want to talk about that, but later on after you're done with the intro. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And then currently I'm a father. Mm -hmm. uh, and I tend to think of myself as a, an opportunity creator for others, oh. especially for the team that works for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, Sebastian. Uh, you talked about you being an engineer, which you don't practice. Yeah. Why would you choose to venture to something different other than your field career? career? Uh, two things. Uh, the way I ended up in the engineering class mm -hmm. was, uh, number one, I would say, not peer pressure, but you see when you go to high school and then you get certain grades, mm -hmm. that's what you get called to do. So you're a victim of circumstances. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you would say them. that. Mm -hmm. And then now, when you get to school now, you realize you are more into the entertainment aspect of mm -hmm. it. So when there's an event happening, you're the one who knows Charge. where the speakers are, you know who's going to speak on the stage, you know where the wiring is. Mm -hmm. So over time, I, I tended to drift towards that. I, would, I was the guy who would be setting up an event on Sunday and then sitting for my cut or whichever paper oh. on Monday. Mm -hmm. So when I graduated, finally I realized that I was more inclined into doing events. Mm -hmm. But all is not lost because with that knowledge, it helps in the critical thinking of event how we approach our business. All right, uh, let's talk about you being the founder now. When you look, when a, each and every entrepreneur, when they're looking for a way to venture into the market, they usually see a particular gap. Yeah. You know, probably they can look into and say, I want to venture because of this particular reason. Yeah. Why, why did you choose to venture into this particular field? So in 2014, in 2012, 2011, 2012, mm -hmm. uh, after being jobless for some time, and you have your papers, yes, but you're living with your relatives, you're sleeping on the couch, you start looking at what else you can do. So that at that time, social media wasn't that big mm -hmm. uh, in the Kenyan market. So what I would do then is approach people mostly TV anchors or musicians, to sort of manage their day-to-day -day Facebook and Twitter right. pages. And it did so well that now businesses started identifying with what we are doing, and then mm -hmm. I would get one or two businesses signing up. But you see, it wasn't really a registered business. It was just a guy doing Facebook management. But why they pay? Yeah, they were right. paying, but now mm -hmm. you see now without the structures of a business, mm -hmm. there isn't much, the money isn't accounted for. Mm -hmm. You sort of fail to separate your personal money and the business money. Mm -hmm. So in 2015, um, I met a couple of friends. I met a couple of people, one of them was supposed to be a client, and then we ended up registering my first company right. called Social Media Africa Limited. 
So you still own that? I left. Oh. I left. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to get to that. Uh, so what happened was when we registered that, I felt as an entrepreneur. So what I did was I, I created a page mm -hmm. on Instagram and called myself Kenyan Entrepreneur. And then I did the same thing for Twitter. Mm -hmm. So what guys were seeing at that aspect was an organization. They, would, they didn't really know it was a person because what I would share on the pages were motivational quotes, business quotes. Mm -hmm. So guys started asking, so how can you help entrepreneurs? And I was like, wait, so guys are actually looking for this information. So I can call your business oligarch? Uh, not really, I'm not there yet. <laughs> All right, but still yeah. heading there. But uh, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> so the plan was to uh -huh. get uh, people to attend, so mm -hmm. like small events, and bring a mentor and talk to people. Mm -hmm. So the first few days uh, of setting up, we had Trusha Hate here, and then we had Peter Ndwati, and then I was like, okay, so this can be a awesome. thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we started doing it as an annual uh, conference. And over the period we've done, uh, for the first four years, it was an annual conference. Mm -hmm. But now we started doing it as a quarterly event. And in November, we'll be doing our eighth conference. When was your first time you held the conference? 2015. All right. Yeah. So since then, you have been having them annually until now? We had them annually mm -hmm. for the first two, three years. All right. And then we realized the demand was high, so we started mm -hmm. doing them quarterly. So l let me ask about the persons who attend this conference, because according to, the, to what you gave, it's... 15,000 plus have yeah. managed, you know. Yeah, to so we, we have uh, different elements of mm -hmm. it. So there are open days. They are open to anyone who is interested in uh, entrepreneurship. Right. So you have like 2,000, 3,000 people show up. Mm -hmm. But then we have industry focused ones. So we say, like the one we're doing in November is asset finance. So not unless you're in business and you're looking to do asset finance, that doesn't really resonate with you. But for the open days one is where we have the, our biggest numbers. Let's talk about the job market because you're mentioning about, you know, creativity, creating opportunities, you know, yeah. and looking at what we have right now, not waiting even for it to come. Mm -hmm. Talk about it. Uh, in terms of opportunity, I think mm -hmm. uh, with every venture, because as long as you have structures, mm -hmm. the Kenyan constitution at the moment allows you to have a limited company as a single person, as opposed to how it was before. Mm -hmm. So. The moment you have a business, say you're selling mandazi, mm -hmm. the moment you're selling it from a business perspective and not just a subsidiary seller where you're subsisted seller where you're just selling so that you can meet your needs, you'll have someone who's go doing the kneading, you'll have someone who's deep frying the mandazi, you'll have someone who's packaging. So with every small venture you have, there's always uh, a trickle down effect. Mm -hmm. The same way uh, when you hear companies are laying off people, People just look at the numbers of the people that have been laid off, mm -hmm. but they forget that these people have dependents. So it trickles down. So if I have 18 people in my team, these are people, some of them who have families, some of them who are supporting their brother, some of them, even paying the landlord, mm -hmm. it goes back to mm -hmm. the money that they're get, making from this. Mm -hmm. So with right. every venture you do, there's an opportunity to create it. All right, it's getting better and better. Keep interacting with us on our social media platforms. Uh, on Facebook, it's Y254 on our Twitter account. It's Y254 channel and my Twitter account is K underscore Alex. You have a social media platform? Yes, uh, it's Sebi. Uh, mm -hmm. That is for my Instagram. Mm -hmm. But uh, in this case, just if you type Kenyan Entrepreneur, you, you'll find everything that right. we do. Right, so mm -hmm. and also <coughs> remember our question for the day. What do you think about the borrowing trend that have been making, you know, so much significance in our today's society? What do you think about it? Keep interacting with us. We'll get to look at some of your comments at the tail end of the show. Let's continue, Sebastian. And yes. I'll be asking you this question later on okay. as we come to the end. Right. The Entrepreneurship Conference yeah. and Trade and Development. Yeah. What's the main aim? Okay, so I don't know if you're familiar with the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. Mm -hmm. We sort of just did a spin-off of it. Mm -hmm. And the idea for it is to help push conversation on issues that affect not just the youth, but the economy at large. Right. So when we do a Kenktad conference mm -hmm. and talk about finance, it goes down to the Mamamboge, you know. Right. And then how the policies that the government is implementing are affecting them, how the land rates are affecting landlords, and thereafter the families that depend on these premises that have been set up with these mm -hmm. landlords. So it's just a conversation starter, mm -hmm. but the bigger plan is to be at a position where we are part of policy making, right. of course based on our interactions with the people on the ground. 
looking at the people on the ground, what do you think we stand as a country in terms of development? We are headed there. Uh, being a third world country, mm -hmm. uh, a developing country in, the, in that matter, there are things that come with it. Mm -hmm. Primarily in the entrepreneurial field? Yeah, yeah. so now we are seeing a lot of companies, mm -hmm. mostly with Swahili names, and they sound like they're Kenyan companies, but they're not necessarily owned by Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Uh, a few months back, we had a conversation that was doing around whether Jumia was a Kenyan comp African company or not. So I don't know if it is us that are not seeing the opportunities, or if we're just m more inclined towards being consumers of platforms. But I think with <coughs> the more conversations that we have, more mm -hmm. and more youths, because we see even uh, there are more youth getting into manufacturing, which mm -hmm. is the one thing that has been lacking for the longest time. Uh, the problem is most of us want to do or create the next Facebook, the next Instagram, or the next WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. These platforms are there, but I think in as much as they speak to us, mm -hmm. even us guys need to now look at how can we create products that other people can relate with mm -hmm. and sort of scale up. All right. Uh, when we began, you mentioned that you also began something, a company with social? Social Media Africa Limited. Yes, yes. Yeah. H how sustainable was it back then compared to now? Uh, it was sustainable mm -hmm. back in 2015 because that is when more companies were being open to the idea of having mm -hmm. digital presence. But now the problem is uh, the market is saturated, sort of. Right. So not unless you have something that is very unique, mm -hmm. uh, it's very hard to make it sustainable as a business. Yes. But now the trick goes back to when you're signing up a client, are you making sure that you have a longer contract? Because if you're just doing a month-to-month -month basis, people sort of see what you're doing and they just copy-paste and then you become useless. At the Good. Point. What do you need to consider when you're creating your brand? Okay, so at the end of the day, it goes back to what you want people to remember right. you for. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you as a company. You as a company and mm -hmm. you as a person. Right. So depending with, because there are people who their personal brands are stronger than their businesses. Mm -hmm. So the personal brand sort of carries the business. And then there are companies that are bigger than the person behind it. So it, it just depends with how you want people to know you. Mm -hmm. If you want people to have um, an understanding of who you are, like for example, if you were to say, people will say, mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say, but they would say blue band as opposed to margarine. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. it has been embedded in their head that whatever you apply on bread mm -hmm. is either blue band or jam. Forgetting that these are names to no brands. brands. Mm -hmm. The same way we say um, flask. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's supposed to be a flask, but people say thermos. Mm -hmm. Because ever since you're growing up, they were being called Thermos. You forget that Thermos is a right. name of a company. Mm -hmm. So it's just understanding that you need to embed your brand mm -hmm. in people's mind so that they confuse your name for the product. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are some of the things that you look at you in terms of your company? Because I understand you're now working with 18 people. Yeah. What are some of the things that you look at in terms of values and the like? Because a brand is sometimes, it's not just something that comes up overnight and it just kick off. Uh, in terms of hiring or in terms of yes. work? Okay, so most of the people that we work with are young people. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are even still students. Right. Because we believe uh, that unless you're dealing with s heavy auditing and all that, like you need someone who is experienced with that. But if I need someone to go and oversee mm -hmm. um, our partners setting up a tent at an event, I really don't need someone with 15 years experience. So it's just the drive mm -hmm. and the pe person understanding what we do and it's sort of just owning it. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the things we also do to keep them around is if we see you're bringing value, you're bringing clients, we sort of give you a fraction of the company. Mm -hmm. So you feel like your own, whenever you're bringing in money, you're also making money for your own self. All right, you have mentioned something like a business model, B2B. <coughs> yeah. What's all that all about? The bit would be now, remember earlier when I was talking about the conference. Mm -hmm. So we have open days mm -hmm. that are general, so we have anyone coming in. Mm -hmm. But now the industry focused ones are B2B, mostly business to business. Ideally, uh, like if we're talking about asset finance, mm -hmm. then it means that this business wants to get this tractor or this lorry for their business, but they don't have the full amount upfront. So the company that is giving them the car is also a business.
Right. But so now networks. in between, mm -hmm. there is a bank that is financing it. So at the end of the day, it's businesses doing businesses with others. All right, so it's yeah. just a matter of, you know, when we come together, we can yeah. get to network and... You see, you almost said someone else's slogan just now. What? <laughs> <laughs> So that's how much branding uh -huh. goes into your life without mm -hmm. you necessarily knowing. All right. So it's just a matter of, you know, coming up, have yeah. the best. Give yeah, the and best. saying it over and over and mm -hmm. over. So people think they're saying something from their head. Kumbe, they're just saying what, you, what they see on TV and newspapers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, when we began, you said something about, uh, you know, the Kenya Enterprise, <coughs> the website that you guys have. Yeah. You don't, by any chance, write anything. We don't it's alter. you receive. We don't alter. So we are... Uh, we call ourselves reliable corporate reporting platform. Mm -hmm. So what these companies do is they send us information as it is, based on how they want people who are either their investors mm -hmm. or people who have an interest in their products to know. Because sometimes you go to a company's website, say if it's an e-commerce platform, they can't do they can't do a lot of blogging or writing on it. Mm -hmm. So they need a platform where if you want to follow uh, this certain company, what they're doing, what their financial year is. So, you, for example, you want to buy stocks and stuff. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you're looking to get employed or you want to see what the achievements they're doing. Even if, uh, if you look at our site, most of our readers are not in the, in, in the Kenyan space. Mm -hmm. They are people from outside looking to see what companies to come and invest in. So the way they send it to us is the way we publish. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, your brand is primarily focused on what you receive, but not what you use necessarily do as in terms of writing and the like. Yeah. Let's now go back <coughs> to the basics of the entire blog or rather the entire website. Yeah. It's your own. Yeah. How do you manage you know, to get contacts from the rest of the companies to just forward to you? Because I don't know whether we have any other company. Uh, not that I know of. Mm -hmm. So most we have bloggers, mm -hmm. so people who would see, um, say, KBC or White Five for doing something, and then they write based on their opinion, right? And then we have media houses. So media houses, we, we have editors who sort of go through what they do. Whatever you send them, they have to edit it. Mm -hmm. But you also realize that if it's a newspaper, if, the, if it's too long, it's going to eat up the advertising space, so they need to cut it down. So their editing is not necessarily to remove content. Mm -hmm. It's more of re keeping the main content, but in lesser words. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have people who just say they're bloggers, but there's no one other platform apart from ours that allows corporate to give information to mm -hmm. their followers and to their readers and to their investors like ours. All right, what are some of the companies that probably post with you? We have Safaricom. All right. We have Sportpesa. We have Barclays. Quite a number. Quite a number of Yeah, that. so the way to get them mm -hmm. sometimes is through their agencies. And that's a hard question probably for someone who's sitting there thinking like, you know, for you it's just happened. How did you get to all this? It doesn't, it doesn't. So initially when we started, we mm -hmm. were a blog. So we'd write stories on entrepreneurship. All right. But uh, our readership was not where we wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. So we did what, you, what is called pivoting. Pivoting is just tweaking your business model for it to make business sense. Mm -hmm. So now what happens is uh, we decided, okay, we're going to focus on corporate reporting because you realize uh, there isn't much. Like if you wanted to read about a certain company, you wouldn't know where to go and look. Mm -hmm. So. We started doing what, whatever we are doing for free, mm -hmm. just to wow. get the numbers and to get the content, mm -hmm. so that when we were pitching, people actually see that there's a platform that is in existence. Mm -hmm. And then now, after some time now, once we, our numbers hit in thousands in readership per article, now it gave us a bargaining chip. So we tell them, look, we'll write your content for the entire year. Whatever you send us, we'll publish, but these are our packages. Yeah. Wow, so you are already right now giving out packages to other companies? Yeah, so when you come, you either check a quarterly package, a six months package, or a mm -hmm. yearly package. On, on <laughs> presumption, how would it be presumably on like, if I came to you with my own company, Yeah. how, how much would it be? Uh, we tend to shy away from saying numbers. On a rough estimation? <laughs> Either, either that, we, t we, t we tend to shy away All from right. it because... You just come to the office. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, I understand because most companies really prefer you know, to go live Yeah, because it. if I tell the numbers, mm -hmm. it is sometimes a shock it, yeah, or they invite me. Yeah, because what we, what we do is uh, we show you value. Mm -hmm. we, you come and we tell you, uh, over the last month we've had 500,000 people visit our website. Mm -hmm. And it's not a sporting site, it's not a social media site. 
it's not a social site. When you're coming there, you're coming to, for business news. Mm -hmm. So if 500,000 people are visiting the website, and then now we break down the demographics mm -hmm. of the age, where they're from, then you see the value. Because mm -hmm. numbers, if I say 1,000 shillings, or if I say a million shillings, <laughs> It, it all goes back negative. to how does it mm -hmm. affect your bottom line as a company. All right. So yeah. you just come to the office and get to see how things go. Yeah. Probably uh, be, as we wind up, you mind sharing your uh, social media platforms and how we can get you? So when you go to Google and just type the Kenyan Entrepreneur, will come as the first result. Mm -hmm. uh, on Facebook, we are the Kenyan Entrepreneur. All on right. Instagram, we are Kenyan Entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. If you want to get in touch with us, uh, I can give my phone number. Yes, you can. Please go ahead. Yeah, 0704-024-707. All right. That's mm. uh, Sebastian himself. Yes, thank you. I have a question for you, Sebastian. That, that's our question for today. <coughs> right. I'd like to hear your answer. Okay. The borrowing trend has become so much rampant in the country. Mm -hmm. You know, we're having so very many apps that have been coming up. What yeah. do you think about the borrowing trend in the country? Okay. Uh, Borrowing is not bad. Mm -hmm. Most companies that are out here as multi-billion companies mm -hmm. or multi-million companies have debt. Debt is not bad mm -hmm. as long as uh, you've borrowed for it to affect your bottom line right. and there's a plan to pay back. But the problem with easy accessibility is sometimes, because you'd go to a mobile lending app, mm -hmm. What you need at this moment is 5,000. Mm -hmm. But you go and look at your limit, and it tells you your limit is 20,000. You're like, oh, this 15,000, I can do something else with it. So you borrow without mm -hmm. really having a plan. So at the end of the day, you are in deeper debt, mm -hmm. and whatever you borrowed then for. You anticipated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then now paying back becomes an issue, and then you end up on CRB. Now you can't borrow again. <laughs> all right, right, yeah. all right. So what would be advice? Just have a plan. If you have a plan uh -huh. to use that money to mm -hmm. make more money, it's fine. All right, that has been Sebastian Gida. Gida. Yes, Gida. <laughs> that's yeah. like, you know, that's an Gida thing. But yeah. anyway, that has been Sebastian. That has been awesome to have him on board. Very much coming up next, and later on, we'll be looking at some of the comments that you have been sending along the way. This is Y254. My name is Karanja Alex. Thanks so very much.